Hello. Hi, I'd like to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. Somebody stole that car. Oh, I'm just kidding. I just wanted somebody to talk to. What you doing? I'm cooking hot dogs and popcorn. Hot dogs sound really good. I like mine with ketchup. I'm sorry. I gotta go. Don't you hang up on me, you little bitch. Bye. Hello? Why do you keep hanging up on me? I just want to see who I'm talking to. Who is this? Wouldn't you like to know? Give me a hint. Okay, I've got long, blonde, curly hair. I sell plexus. I have a baby cage. Are you a dugger? Funny enough, my daughter is actually married to one of their in-laws. I really gotta go. Ugh, you made me burn my wiener. Hello? Do you like Fundy Fridays? Yeah, it's okay. What's your favorite episode? Uh, I don't know, probably the Jill Rodriguez one. Ah, good, good. That means you'll probably want to play my game. Like Scream? No, it's legally distinct from Scream, actually. Uh, that sounds boring. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Well, if you don't play my game, then he's gonna get it. Ooh. James, of course. Uh, what are you gonna do to him? I'm gonna gut him like a fish! Stop, stop, stop! I'll play the game! All right, all right. Okay, here's my first question. What was Tammy Faye Baker's favorite drink? Diet Coke. All right, I knew that was easy. What song did Josh Duggar sing to his wife, Anna, on their wedding day? Loyalty song, too easy. What are the 12 genders of Professor Fred Durst's gender theory? Ladies, gentlemen, person. Wrong! Wrong! Now he's gonna get it and I'm gonna get you too! Where are you? I have a knife! I'm gonna call the cops. No! No! Why are you doing this? Because you never subscribe! Ah! Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Jen and this is Fundy Fridays and this is a very special episode. It is the third annual Jill Rodriguez Halloween special. It's become a really important video in my life and I think it's really important to you guys too, so welcome. I am not doing my makeup in this video because it is a huge pain in the ass and it is nighttime right now. So you're lucky that I even got my lashes on because I almost blinded myself. So we do not have any sponsors today. It is just a special video, a special gift that I like to give to you all every year. You know, as a kid, my dream career was always a toss up between teacher and journalist. So I'm incredibly grateful that I get to do YouTube as a career now because it's kind of the perfect combination of those two jobs. I get to learn and talk for a living, two of my favorite things. And I've even begun to think of my yearly Rodriguez video as kind of the Fundy Friday State of the Union address. Address. It is one of the first major videos that I published that got traction and as a spooky bitch I do think of October as the new year anyway. Things reset, um, I get the reverse seasonal depression, and I take time to reflect on the past year of content as well as my life in general. And I think that's why every time I do one of these Rodriguez videos that I give such a long caveat at the beginning. It's mostly to help me reflect on things, but it's also important to discuss how we, we being the snark community, approach these subjects that mean so much to us. Jill's life and family are a great reflection of the snark community and what we do and stand for. She is someone who maintains a public image, but who is not famous. Someone who involves her whole very large family into her public image and somebody who appears to be well below the poverty line. And Jill, motivated by religious fervor, lives against the grain of society, making her prime snarking material. And at the end of the day, I do think it is 
very weird that our community exists and that the main activity we rally around is posting videos and pictures of strangers and nitpicking everything they do and memeing it. I am aware that honest to goodness deconstruction does go on in the Fundy Snark community. And I have been privileged to hear some of the incredible stories from friends and fans of reclaiming and reframing the relationship between spirituality and self. But it's very obvious that we do an awful lot of unproductive stalking of people on social media and I am 100% guilty and, and complicit in doing that as well. I was also naively unaware that a huge portion of my audience and the snark community at large is made up of middle and high schoolers. So it's vitally important that I at least try to start setting a good example for how to approach these subjects and how to treat the very real people that we snark on with dignity and kindness, even while I am also leveling criticism. And I want my audience to know that it's okay to change your views, beliefs, and outlook on life. It's not a weakness and it's not a sign of moral failure. It's a natural part of learning, growing, and developing as a person. And it's never too late to make these changes, which is why I want to say that just like last year, I have undergone a few changes about how I feel about things. Nothing is radically different, but in the last year alone, I have done much more research about things like child welfare, classism, racism, parasocial relationships, and humanity in general. Now, I do still find it incredibly inappropriate to call CPS on a stranger you've never met, and I think it says a lot more about the people calling than it does the parents. I still also hate the phrase, feed your kids, Jill, even though I I do understand why people say it. But in my opinion, I don't think that helps. And in fact, I think it's become more of a meme and a hashtagable phrase than it is an actual call for accountability. I think it's become an identifier for snarkers when it's not supposed to be that. And that's not even to mention the impact that it may have on the children themselves. I know I'm the loudest and most vocal person who discusses the Rodriguez family and overall that I hold a position of responsibility and circumstance in the snark world. I know that I'm responsible for everything that I say and that when I call things out, I am willing to be held accountable for that. And yes, I do dress up technically as a weird caricature of Jill Rodriguez for a Halloween special every year, but I hope that none of you actually think that that's reality and that she's, you know, she's not a real witch that drinks a pink drink and kills people. She's just a regular person who posts 12 times a day and is incredibly awkward and offensive. Is it mean-spirited to do these parodies every year? Probably, and that's something that I'm trying to rectify in my life, but really it's become more of a fun project for me every year to try to do some sort of horror movie spoof and I find it to be a really fun way to express my creativity. And these thoughts that I have about, you know, is it cruel to do what I do? does keep me up at night. And as much as I love doing them, if I ever get to the point where I'm becoming a part of the problem instead of the solution, then I'm going to have to stop doing them. But I do think it's appropriate, at least right now, to make these videos because Jill is still chasing fame in a way that's more aggressive than I've probably ever seen her do so. Jill invites us into her life, home, and faith, and as such, I think she opens herself up to criticism and parody. So while Jill continues to publicly overshare her life, advocate for a draconian Christian worldview that subjugates women, supports Donald Trump, and hawks her pink snake oil to other struggling moms, I feel that the criticism is reasonable and warranted. And sometimes criticism can be funny, and that's called parody. So now that I'm done lecturing you, I will give you a brief summary of Jill and her life. Jill Rodriguez is an evangelical uh, fundamentalist woman well known in the Fundy Snark community for her offensive posts, bizarre and uncanny valley videos, and wild antics where she constantly puts her children in physical danger, such as having babies in a cage and letting slash forcing her teens roll around in a dirty ditch. She is married to a man named David Rodriguez who has a religious track printing ministry. They do not make much, if any, money from this ministry, and it seems that they supplement their income through pyramid schemes, poorly produced seed of their family band and the kindness of misguided strangers. Here she is exploiting her young daughters to sell the aforementioned pyramid scheme drink. I am one of 13 children. These are yummy vitamins. They help grow your bones strong. Like this is a rare yeah. one. And they help your brain be smart. They even have probiotics in them. They're non-GMO, no artificial color, gluten-free, and vegetarian. Mm-mm, good. Or the sauce. Or the sauce. This collagen complex helps keep you mamas beautiful with a vibrant complexion. 
It also helps keep your joints from aching. Microbiome Kids. This is a drink your children will love. It has healthy omegas in it and so tasty. It even has prebiotics in it. Mm-mm, good. Are you mamas tired? Take this little drink to bring back your energy. <laughs> Jill and her family travel across the country playing trite gospel music and giving sermons at small IFB churches. It seems that they get their food, transportation, and housing from friendly church families helping them out during these tours. Jill is known for her desperate obsession with fame, and Jill always seems to float precariously in the orbit of more established fundy royalty. And since it's Jill, she never leaves an event without taking 700 bad pictures to be posted on social media, including the time that she took selfies at a funeral. Besides the intense fame whoring, Jill treats her family and friends like absolute shit. She continues to exploit her disabled sister, post extremely private moments of her kids online, and makes a fool of herself by embarrassing everyone by doing shit like having a gender reveal party in the cafeteria of a hospital while her sister fights for her life in the ICU. Jill is often made fun of for her appearance, and I'm guilty of being a part of that. I mean, I even did a whole uh, tutorial on how she does her makeup, but to be fair, I did follow it step by step. And while my video was hilarious, I'm going to avoid that kind of thing moving forward. David and Jill have 13 children, who appear significantly malnourished in most of the photos and videos that the family posts. And I know I said I hate comments about Jill feeding her kids, but this is why that they say that. They document um, just how little their family eats and um, pretty obvious that David is quite portly while her children remain very thin. So there's something to be said about that. And I do not have an answer for you on what to do about the kids appearing hungry and gaunt. I do not support the idea of calling the authorities and I don't agree with someone harassing Jill about it. And I am not God. I am not a mandated reporter. I am just someone who makes YouTube videos, so I don't have an answer for you, and I am not equipped to help any of these people, nor would Jill accept any help, I think, if somebody tried to give it to her. So that's my statement on that. I do not know what to do, and all I can do is keep the conversation alive. But I know for a fact that circling the children's ribs in photos and zooming in on their dark circles on their eyes is not helping. And when the kids grow up and see that, I expect it's going to wreck their psyches. With that being said, here is what Jill and her family have been up to for the past year. Right off the bat, literally the exact day that I released Jill Rodriguez 2, Jill posted the wedding video of Nuri and Nathan's wedding. If you remember me talking about that in the last video of how I was annoyed that she hadn't uploaded it by October. If you were a Jennaite around the time that this video was released, um, you might remember that we had a live stream um, viewing and chat of the wedding and it was really fun and I didn't record any of that, it just exists in my memory. If things ever go sour, we'll always have Nuri's wedding. And seriously, it wasn't that bad. Nuri looked beautiful and you could tell that Nathan really loves her. Really, you're going to open the wedding with whoremongers? Marriage honors God, and God honors marriage. There was even an appearance by a very pregnant Hosanna Plath uh, singing a lovely song for the couple.
Here is the moment you were all waiting for, the first kiss. Okay, Nathan, now it's time to kiss your bride. <laughs> They had Josh Duggar MC the reception, and I love this part because he's like, Dear Lord, thank you for this uh, lovely moment. Now, who wants some Chex Mix? Thank you for this food and this time of fellowship that we can have. Uh, may everything that we say and we do today bring honor and glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, go ahead and dig in here. Enjoy some snacks. And uh, we're going to visit a little bit. And uh, as they make their way in, we'll make a few more announcements. Hopefully, uh, you got enough. Nuri and Nathan live in Florida near Nathan's family, the Kellers. Yes, those Kellers. Keep up, keep up. In February, the happy couple announced that they were expecting and you know Jill had to be obnoxious and over the top about it. But anyway, here is James and I's reaction to the news. So we're super excited to be grandparents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's been... What was oh. it? What do you think? Was it the baby? Did I win a prize or do I, is it just the existential dread every time I interact with this stuff? Oh, it's just like, I should be a great. I feel like that's the only oh, prize. Well, I'm happy for you, Nuri. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, every child is a blessing. <laughs> Nuri is due this month, and I wonder if she'll have the baby before this episode comes out. Honestly, if she's going to follow the trajectory of the last video, she'll probably have the baby tonight. Also in February, the Rodriguez family climbed on protected monuments in historical St. Augustine, Florida, all the while taking pictures, of course. There was even a change.org petition made about the family to try and keep them from tampering with things again. This situation can be seen as a handy metaphor for the family. Climbing all over your rights desecrating other people's cultures and taking lots of pictures as they do it. In April, Jill went to Amish country and took lots of photos, even though that's highly offensive to Amish people. But what you expect, it's Jill's world and we're all just living in it. Here she is on an outing with Timmy um, where they went to a shaker community and she just straight up calls them a cult. Oh honey, who's gonna tell her? I'm kidding, of course. I've been trying to tell her that she's in a cult for three years now. The Rodriguez family have been adding on to their barn house, and by that I mean she hired Amish men to build for her, and I mean, as long as she's paying them, that seems fine. The rods were clearly cramped with that many people and all of Jill's accessories, so it was about time they expanded. Is the attic space, like I said, it'll be guest quarters. It will also be a sewing space. I'm thinking of putting my sewing nook over in here somewhere. Um, crafts, a craft nook. This, this will all be closed off. That was our old roof. They had to build a new one above it to make sure it would drain right. Um, and, um, lots of storage. Uh, we're going to have our games up here, our photo albums, all of that. So behind this wall, um, we're actually going to build a door here to access this. But it's kind of hard to see in here right now because it's a little bit dark. We need to put a light in here. But I already have this all organized, all my bins, like my Christmas bins, all labeled, all the seasons, old school books, coming in or out of town hey, guests, whoever. Uh, hardware store? Hardware store with Philip because I need a grounding strip. Okay. Box. Okay. So I'll be back. All right, I love you. Bye. <laughs> In June, Nuri and Nathan announced the gender of their baby on cardboard. Okay. And there's her baby bump. Such a cute baby bump. <laughs> and we are so excited that they're expecting. When is your due date, Nuri? October 12th. October 12th. And so they're excited to share with you all today what the baby is. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. <laughs> Blue is silly string. <laughs> so it is a boy. No, 
No, I changed my mind. I have to say something. Why did Jill get an entire pamper mama party, not to mention the gender reveal in the cafeteria, but she made Nari settle for some cardboard bullshit in what appears to be the side of the road? Do better, Jill. If you're going to make your daughter's pregnancy all about yourself, at least have the decency to invest in it. You know, I wouldn't worry too much about Nari. She seems to be really being taken care of by the Kellers and they're actually treating her very well and like the queen that she is, so. I mean, just look at her glow up. I'm sure the Kellers would never forget their own daughter's name. Such a happy family. Yeah, I'm gonna choose to ignore that. In July, Jill took her family to a sewer to play. And no, I am not joking. And I thought people were exaggerating, um, but they weren't. I'm pretty sure this is a sewer. Why else would there be a giant tunnel there? I'm really trying to be nice here, Jill, but you're making it really fucking hard. Is she coming? I, I just refuse to believe that she can't tell the difference between a proper safe swimming hole and a fucking sewer. And not to mention that her daughters were in full length um, modest dresses, which is another drowning hazard. And all the germs. And just the, just what in the E. coli is happening here? I mean, at best, this was a dirty ditch, right? And at worst, it's a sewer. I can't help but feel that Pennywise would be a better parent than Jill at this point. At least Pennywise wouldn't make his kids sing a homophobic song about farm animals. <laughs> We all know that Jill's pretty misogynistic, you know, her whole culture is like that. And unfortunately, much of that has rubbed off on her oldest son, Timmy. See, Timmy's gone through some important changes lately. He lives, or at least I think he does, I'm pretty sure he does, lives in an RV on the Rodriguez property. Good for him, he's getting some independence, some privacy, while still, you know, being able to um, see his family right up the hill. And he's used this time alone to record some music. There are forces in the world today who oppose our Christian faith. They attempt to destroy everything that's holy and control what preachers say. And most importantly, his new podcast, which after listening to this, you'll understand why we now call him Tim Cell. When you're out and about and you're walking around and you're dressed, can people tell that you're different from anyone else, especially ladies? Can a person walk in a store and be like, oh, wow, they're different? Do you young girls or even older ladies, but more, more like more often than not, younger Younger ladies, do you walk around dressed in a way that isn't appropriate and pleasing to God? I've been struggling with that fact actually lately. Um, I've seen some friends of mine and stuff recently who I thought had higher standards. Um, just seeing some different things being like, oh, huh, they don't have quite as high of standards as I thought. Timmy, no. Stop it. Stop it, Timmy. A lot of young ladies dress a certain way to impress a guy. So that's a primary reason, is to impress a guy or impress other people. I'm going to tell you something right now. 
This, this is geared specifically toward young ladies in general. If a good, godly guy is going to be interested in you, he is not going to be interested in you if you dress in a way that is inappropriate or not pleasing to God. I'm telling you so many times I've seen girls and Christians and they're dressed a certain way and come to find out they're a Christian, they go to such and such a church and I'm like, wow, you would have never been able to tell. And God will bless you more and more abundantly and with a better guy if you choose, if you choose to have a higher standard. If a guy's too concerned about how you're dressing or how you look or whatever, um, that does not show good godly character on his side. How is he going to be faithful to you after marriage? If that's all he's concerned about, then I'd have serious doubts of whether or not he's actually a good guy or not. He's not concerned about your character. He's not concerned about how you're going to raise, help raise your children, how you're going to, going to teach your children. He's not concerned about all that. And down the years, I'm sure that you will have probably more marriage problems. And there's a possibility your marriage might even end up in a divorce. How do I know this? I'm a guy. I know what guys look for. So if I'm going to be interested in another girl, I want to see that they know how to dress and they know how to act and that they have good character, especially for guys. If God hasn't brought someone into your life yet, take that time to draw closer to God and become more financially prepared. I want to get married. I really do. One of the reasons why I think so many people struggle is because they're like, well, there's not many guys or girls out there that dress this way anymore, think this way anymore, um, and it's just hard. Why do I know this? Because I've thought those same exact things. Maybe you say, I've been single for five years, I've been graduated for a while, I'm 25 years old, I'm still not married. I've thought, God, am I doing something wrong? Help me to um, just serve you more, be more faithful to you. For the lips of a strange woman drop as honeycomb, but her end is bitter as wormwood. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Did you hear that? Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. That is talking about the harlot. That's talking about someone that's walking around dressed terribly into every single guy that she sees. If any guy is looking for a good, godly girl, you go to Proverbs 31 and it gives you a detailed description of what you should be looking for. Okay? It's that simple. In September, the Rodriguez family um, spent some time with some barnyard animals, including letting her daughter ride on a fucking t turtle, which is... Are you riding on the tortoise? And then she also let her daughter uh, pick up a goat, so, uh, who the whole family thinks is a llama. Can you get it? <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, Janessa. <laughs> yeah, you holding a little baby girl? It's a llama. <laughs> but, you know, Jill has never respected animals, so this isn't really news. Also in September, Jill um, photoshopped a woman's blouse to be more modest. A woman that I might add was helping Jill out by joining her plexus downline. Jill's just really concerned with modesty and lewd behavior. I'd like to read to you today out of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. It says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. 
you know, we are on vacation right now. It's so beautiful. We're here by the water and the beach, and we have just enjoyed looking at God's creation. But oftentimes as we drive up and down the beach, we see all these people living lewd lifestyles. Look up that word, L-E-W-D, lewd lifestyles, and it corrupts the beauty of God's nature. We need to, especially as Christians, live according to God's word, not be uncovering and showing people things that are only meant to be shown to our husband, not drinking and just throwing to wind, to the wind all manner of separation. Let's live holy according to God's word today. Yeah, sorry we can't all dress as modestly as your husband David, seen here rocking last year's knockoff LuLaRoe leggings. Perhaps the most recent and most interesting news to come out of Rodville is that of Kaylee's courtship. My name is Jonathan Hill, and I am extremely excited to announce that Kaylee and I are officially courting. It, she is such a blessing in my life. She has such a heart for the Lord, and you can tell in the way she carries herself. Yeah. I'm thrilled to be courting Jonathan as well, and he is such a blessing to me. Um, we've been getting to know each other since this past spring. And it's just been an amazing um, journey with Jonathan. And he has such a love for the Lord. And our families have so much in common because he has been, he's from a family of 13 children. And I'm also from a family of 13 children. He has, there's nine boys in his family and four girls. Then there's nine girls in our family and four boys. So <laughs> we have a lot in common. Yes. Yeah, but I'm thankful for Jonathan's heart for the Lord most of all. Such a heart for the Lord, and um, all of His beliefs line up with our beliefs, which I'm truly just so thankful for. Um, Jonathan's just been such a blessing to me. <laughs> yes, we are so excited for you both. So, how long have you been getting to know each other for? Uh, since this past spring. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you're both such a blessing. We just love that God is doing a mighty work in both of your lives. And we're excited to see what the future holds for sure. Yeah. So pretty. You turn him around. So gorgeous. Where did he get those, Kaylee? He got them at um, the Wisteria, the Wisteria shop. shop. It's a little Amish run shop in Fredericksburg, so yes. <laughs> it was so nice. Well, we're happy for you both. Any last words, Jonathan? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching. Yes. yes. Thank you for watching. Bye, Bye for now. Her boyfriend's name is Jonathan Hill, and yes... He does have a brother named Bobby. The best part of this courtship announcement is that in the comments, famous child abuse enthusiast Debbie Pearl um, tries to dunk on Jill and she's like, um, yeah, the car noises were a little much. <laughs> Fuck you. Jill famously obsesses over her children's partners, filming and photographing everything they do. And I do think that's kind of sweet in a very toxic kind of way. Whoever is dating a Rodriguez daughter, they must really care and love that girl if they're willing to put up with Jill. Talk about a Herculean task. <laughs> <laughs> Kaylee is giving Jonathan a haircut. <laughs> it's so squishy in here. All this stuff is for our living room. That's why we have all this clutter here. It's about how high do I go with this one? Just a little bit. Yeah, it's about right. Okay. A little bit much higher than that. Looking good, Kaylee. We will show you a picture of the finished product. <laughs> way stronger than me. I need one of you, Sammy. <laughs> or 60. Go up to 60. 65. 65. <laughs> you 
did it. Good. I mean, if I lean back, like, I don't know what I have to do to be a beauty. <laughs> Am I the only one concerned over Kaylee's uh, dangerous routine there of having no shoes on in the gym and her just terrible form? I'm worried she's going to throw her back out and break all of her toes. As for the rest of the rodlets, they seem to have a really great summer. They um, shot guns and even pretended to be cowboys for a day. Here we are, guys. We are pretending to be cowboys, aren't we, guys? <laughs> yep. This is Timothy. This is Sam. This is Gabe. Hi, Gabe. You look like that. Your hat looks better. My hat looks better, yep. That's yeah. because the guy wearing it looks amazing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Uh, she's supposed to say that, not me. Right? Okay. All right, let's all get a picture. On your mark, get set. Let's do this better here. There you are, Olivia. Where are you, sweetheart? I can't find you. Oh, whoops. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, get a hat, get a hat. Here, I'll yes. just take a picture while I'm No, no, I'm taking a picture. I'm taking a selfie. Oh. Yep. All right, one, two, and three. So, one. Okay. Jill continues to try and make herself famous, and recently she announced that she's writing a book for young girls and ladies. Here's the photo shoot for that. And I guess her constant fame whoring is working because, and I'm not making this up, Selena Gomez's mother posted on Instagram that she too had fallen down the rod hole. If you're watching this, um, Selena's mom, tell Justin Bieber I said, go fuck yourself. And I like your daughter's cooking show. It's, it's really cute. And Love Song is my favorite song of hers. In conclusion, I am no one's moral authority or therapist. I merely present information that I find interesting and interpret it through my own lens. As for what can we do for her children, I honestly don't think we can do anything. If Jill is going to change, if her kids are going to get help, get the resources, food, and education they need, it's going to have to come from somebody that Jill knows in her own personal life. Somebody from her church, maybe even a family member. It cannot be from an online community whose entire purpose is to poke fun at her life. Furthermore, the American legal system is geared towards protecting folks like the Rodriguez family. Homeschool laws have been kept lax in many states for a reason, and it is truly staggering what one can get away with in this country under the guise of religious freedom. And that's not even to mention the powerful Christian special interest groups that will often provide folks like the Rodriguez family with the best legal defense money that they can get. What can we do? We, and I'm mostly talking about myself, um, we can do better with how we act online and how we treat people people in parasocial relationships. We can certainly work on not poverty shaming people and making fun of them just for being poor because that's not funny no matter the circumstance. We can also be careful with the words that we choose and ways in which we criticize. And we can be cautious to act ethically even when we are righteously angry. And I know this is a heavy preachy message, but I want to stress that it's not all bad. I have met some of the most incredible people through this community for one reason or another. We just rally around this strange and offensive Q-list celebrity. But you know, I have to grandstand a little bit gives me just that tiny burst of dopamine that I need to get through the rest of my day. The majority of you guys kick ass and I look forward to talking to you every week in the comments. I love you guys. Happy Halloween. Be safe and God bless. Who is this? Wouldn't you like to know? Mom? <laughs> 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 I don't really give a shit about James. I actually hate when he's on the show. This I did not write this, James. He's trying to roast me. It's okay. Oh, well, he's afraid I'm going to eclipse your life. <laughs> <laughs> did you do it? No. Wait. <laughs>
You gotta roll more. <laughs> yeah.